Psalms, chapter 99. The Lord reigneth. Present tense. God reigns in the throne. <coughs> and yet sometimes prophecy about Jesus Christ reigning is talking now, right now. Sometimes how assured God is. He writes something that's going to happen. It's happening. Lord reign, let the people tremble. Fear. That sure ain't today. He sitteth between the cherubim. Revelation tells us there's four of them. When they built the ark, there's two of them. Let the earth be moved. Well, that's definitely a second advent passage. But there are times in the Old Testament the scriptures did say that the earth was moved at when times of celebration. The Lord is great in Zion. That's New Jerusalem. That's the Holy Hill. He is high above all the people. Again, uh, the teaching is that Jerusalem in a millennium is going to be the only mountain, the only high place of the earth. Let them praise thy great and terrible name. What's terrible about the name of Jesus or Jehovah? It's not that, you know, a spooky, eerie kind of terror. It's a terror that incites terror. It's a terror that God is all powerful and God can destroy you. As he did destroy Egypt. God destroyed Babylon. When, a, when a, I forget their names, but a husband and wife lied before God and the Holy Spirit, Peter, in the church, in the book of Acts, God destroyed him, killed him. It would be the kind of terror that would inspire us to do right. And yet we have them sins that we enjoy to do. That is not a God, a name that inspires terror. If we go about sinning as well, oh well, my thrill, my entertainment is more important than Oh, if it was terror, it was incite the name of the Lord, it would make you sad and make you upset. It would make you repent and make you not want to sin. That is gone today. Terror of the name. For it is holy. Why does God deserve, not desire, deserve worship? For he is holy. And outside the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Who or what is holy? Now the Bible says holy angels, but one third of them are after the devil. One third of them are going to be kicked out of heaven. So I don't know if we can go up to heaven and say, you, 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 you you're not holy, but you're holy. I mean, if we find Michael and find Gabriel. Well, what about saints that have gone on to glory? Yeah, but didn't they get saved by the gospel? Weren't they sinners saved by grace? Didn't they have a time in their life that they came and knew Jesus as their Savior? What were they before then? They were unholy. And what is holy without sin? The fact is that God is pure and right all the time. And he's our creator, which 
vast the field of worship beyond no one else is the creator but god the father god the son god the holy spirit of man angels cherubims and all there to be to be they that's why god deserves our praise because without god there would be absolutely nothing according to john chapter one the king's strength also loveth judgment that's not a capital K. That's the king that's on the throne at the time of writing Psalms 99. What is his what is his strength when a king sits on the throne? His military power? Nope. His armies? Nope. The Persians came in, the Medes came in came under the city of Babylon to destroy it. When you love judgment. And what is judgment? You properly, rightfully, divide right from wrong. Innocent from guilty. What was the judgment around Romans' time? I'm going to say around 33 AD, thereabouts. What was the judgment? I find no fault in this man. Let me chastise him. What did he do to be chastised? Because I will make the Jews happy and make them my friend. I will, I will chastise them and then turn them over to be crucified. I thought you said three times. You find no fault. Well, that's not judgment. That's judgment. That's not right judgment. And when we take verse 3, the terrible name and the holy name of God. When God says you are guilty and you are in terror. And God is always right and will never lie. You're in trouble. And when God is holy and he declares you innocent. And it's right and proper judgment. That was still in sight a, ter a terrible, a terrorness. That I don't want to do wrong. The exact meaning of capital punishment. I don't want to commit murder. Because the terror is if I murder somebody. I am to die. I don't want to accidentally kill anybody because if I do, for the Jew, I will have to go to the city of refuge and wait for the high priest to die. That's the holy and righteousness judge of God. And any throne that's going to be established is going to be established by that. And if you think the American White House and Supreme Court of the land is judging correctly and God will honor it, you're absolutely blind and don't know nothing. Over the years since my life, we have seen people of, of belief. We have seen people of popularization. We have seen people of sports and people of entertainment field go before a judge and their sentence, even though found guilty, their sentence has been reduced or, or they have been found innocent because of who and what they are or what race they are. That's not judgment. And when God said before the law to Noah, when there was no even calling of Abraham, and God told Noah, anybody that kills anybody, his blood is to be shed. And you've got a nation who is housing and taking care of and, and providing food for murderers who have been found guilty. God is not going to bless you as a nation. That's not proper judgment. When the criminal gets more rights than the victim. 
Thou didst establish equity. That's justice and right. Were you caught doing a crime? Well, you get a free phone call. You get a free lawyer. The person that you criminalize gets nothing. The criminal that was caught doesn't even have to appear in court, doesn't have to say nothing. The victim has to stand before a trial and give all of it. If it's a rape, that rape trial will not go forward until the victim tells the court all the questions and then gets slammed by the person, the prosecuting attorney to, to make her or him or the child look bad. What about the rapist? He don't have to say nothing. He don't have to be nowhere. That's not judgment and that's not equity. God will come and judge all men save their laws. The judges that do. Thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob, which is Israel. Exalt ye the Lord our God, Israel. Verse 4. Lift up God. Why? Because he's holy. He's right. <clears throat> Except for Nathan, I don't see where David appeared before any trial board. I don't see where David appeared before any judge, but before God. And no one saw the action but God, and God says, you're guilty. He's the king. God says, so? So? And worship at his footstool. The Bible says that footstool is the earth. Save Mother Earth. You know, you know the Bible says God just puts his feet up on that footstool and just rests. What you do with a hassock? Again, for he is holy. God deserves the attention, the praise, because he is holy. And he is always absolutely correct. That's why we're not to give any worship or praise to the devil, because he's wrong. He's the liar. Moses and Aaron among his priests. And Moses was a priest. Moses the one that set up the tabernacle and did everything set up for Aaron until Aaron was ready. It was all there. And Samuel among them that called upon his name. And we're going back to a little history of Israel. We're reminding his, Israel their history. Moses, who was a great man among the Jewish people, and even the time of Jesus. Aaron, the high priest. Samuel. They had called upon the name of the Lord. They called upon the Lord, and he, God, answered them. He spake unto them in a cloudy pillar. All right, I, I understand Moses and I understand Aaron, but where's Samuel? I don't ever recall anywhere where where, where God speaks to Samuel and is reported of a, that cloudy pillar. But the Bible gives us other information in other book and another passage of scripture that you're to study and go read and say, I don't read my Bible and say, oh, the pillar showed up even for Samuel. So if I were to ask a Bible question, uh, who, who did God speak uh, the, the cloudy pillar? Your answer would be correct for Moses and Aaron. And for Samuel. That cloudy pillar spoke that time to Miriam. But Miriam and Aaron were bad mouthing Moses. 
I believe he said the, the cloudy pillar came out of Tabernacle. He said, Give me a U3. Get out of here. Come here. They kept his testimony and the ordinance that he gave them Moses, Aaron, and Samuel. Look how God overlooked uh, the murder of Moses. Look how God overlooked the anger, of Mo and Moses was an angry man. Look how God overlooked the golden calf of Aaron. And the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answer them, O Lord, our God. That was a God that forgave them. There it is. Moses the murder, Moses the anger, Moses Aaron the golden calf, Aaron, Samuel, God forgave them. So there was and is forgiveness in the Old Testament. It wasn't properly paid into the blood of Jesus Christ. But they had forgiveness. They died and went to Abraham's bosom. They just didn't go to glory. The blood of the lamb had not been changed. Lame. And that lamb, the lamb of God. Though thou took his vengeance on their invention. Well, that's quite interesting. What did. I don't know what invention that Moses did that was except for the murder, except for the anger. Aaron, I would see the golden cow. I don't know what Samuel came up with that. See, there are things we don't know that God knows. There was a whole list of sins that that dying, that both those dying thieves on Calvary's Hill that afternoon, that night. We don't need to know what they are. God knows. And one of them sins of one of those thieves was completely washed and cleansed. And today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And if you've got unholy vengeance of inventions that are against God and his people and other people, God will take vengeance on them. Exalt, lift up the Lord our God. Worship at his holy hill. That's not the church. For the Lord our God is holy. There's the reason. There it is. God is holy. 